to you and your helpers, uh, I would suggest to you that it is as a result of that primarily and the positive attitude that, uh, quite frankly, moved the minister to come, number one, and number two, to, uh, to listen uh, and to come up with reasonable solutions, and we'll continue to do so. Um, we all can, you know, not impervious, but uh, I, I, you know, I'm a big boy, policeman for 30 years. Not everybody's happy with any solution unless they get everything they want. Uh, I would love to wave a magic wand and take this issue off the table. I do not own a magic wand. There are many communities, quite frankly, uh, who, uh, and I've met with other mayors, whose construction projects have been put way back. Uh, it is no, but I always bring this community as an example of the seriousness, and this community has got the top priority. And that's why the minister came. It's not often a minister comes down to, uh, to, to do these types of things, but did so primarily because, uh, because of the positive attitude that's been shown. And some of the criticism, you know, sometimes you need to, sometimes you need to give people a little uh, extra push, and, and the mayor knows how to do that. Some of you folks know how to do that. And, uh, and that's, has, that's, that's what has precipitated a change in plans, but I can tell you that uh, the positive attitude of the Hastings helpers, uh, some of the suggestions, and the roll up the sleeves, let's get at it, uh, attitude really uh, did move us and pushed us in the right direction. Without a temporary bridge, the people who come after me, mainly the other people on my bus who are in grade 9, even the grade 8s will be moving into grade 9 and so forth, will not be able to finish their year or have their year uh, be interruption free without a reroute of their bus. What we're doing is uh, that we've committed to a, uh, to a shortened construction season, a new bridge as opposed to a uh, as opposed to a repair. A uh, new bridge will facilitate a shorter construction period, will facilitate an off-site component of structure, and we'll also, we're also looking at doing some construction uh, in 2013 when there is, uh, when there's a, things that can be done while there's boating traffic and other things in the area. In other words, there's certain things that can be done uh, sort of uh, pre the installation of a, a new bridge that will shorten the construction. It's all about shortening the construction time, mitigating the length of time closures to mitigate all the other uh, things that, uh, that occur because of a lengthened construction. We've talked about accessibility issues, we've talked about young, and we've talked about how this is going to help us in the postponement, which I congratulate you on finding a way to at least come to some sort of compromise on it. My concern is, what about emergency response teams? All of those plans are being worked on, and they were actually in place during the couple of small closures that we had previously. Um, actually, the closest ambulance space is in Norwood for the north side. So, um, all things being in a perfect world, and of course in an emergency, nothing as much is perfect. But somebody on this side who would need to go to a hospital, the Norwood ambulance would take you to Peterborough. And on the south side, the Roseneath base or the Camelford base would take you to CMH. And the time, I'm concerned about time constraints. Well, there's, there's nothing changed because those ambulances are there today that way, whether the bridge is there. I think it would have been 20 plus um, in the repairs that we were looking at doing. There is value still in the existing structure, but the decision was made that uh, for the convenience and, 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 the, and the impact uh, on the community, as well as the long-term financial uh, kind of life cycle uh, costing, that, that, that the new bridge made sense, so we found the additional money to go to the new bridge. And if we're looking at a one-month to a two-month period, it would be easy accessible for local traffic only. Uh, large vehicles would still have to be rerouted, but it would not be a problem of having flagmen uh, or stoplights at either end at McCarthy Point and over here on this side and still allow for local traffic to move safely between the north side and south side. Have anybody looked at that? Uh, I'm advised they have, uh, and I advised, was told it was not an option, but we can ask to be revisited. Oh, I'm sure there's always something more we can do, um, and we haven't finished our plans by any means. We certainly haven't stopped accepting input from the community, and, and, and we won't right up until, until it's completed after it's installed. Um, I've got to quickly reboot my thoughts about the carnival, uh, because 
my thoughts are that it should be done in the summer before the repair, which was hence why we're going to do it this summer. So I've got to talk to uh, my, my committee, which is completely organized with Bob and Tanya on the committee, and, and re regroup that idea. Uh, a lot of our other plans that we're continuing to formulate, we've got extra time to build them out, but we're not going to be initiating them this year. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. It gives us a chance to perfect them. Uh, we just got to, this, this, this good news tonight has got some, some impacts that we're going to have to address. All of their education workers who work with those kids through the winter come from so this looks, so you look at an educational thing where at a major critical point of the school year, they're not going to have access. They're going to have to go 80, and it's not 40 kilometer detour, it's an 80 kilometer mm -hmm. detour because those who have to go have to get back home. So let's not call it a 40 kilometer detour, let's call it what it really is, which is 80 kilometer detour. It's more expensive than people think. And you can't just say that somebody works for free. Canadian Armed Forces don't work for free. You have to, when you're costing things out, you have to incorporate the co uh, manpower co or human resource costs. You have to incorporate materiel. Uh, it has to be a fully costed, uh, a fully costed option. Uh, so we'll we'll do it one more time. But the last time we looked at it uh, for a repair it was temporary bridge was going to cost more than the repair. Uh, there are more than just this bridge. Uh, there's one in, in uh, the Murray Canal that, uh, that is now uh, going to be postponed for a considerable amount of time so that we can divert the money to this project. So it's a matter of prioritization. There is a cost to that community, has been an ongoing cost and continued to be because of lower, uh, lower uh, uh, weights that the bridge is able to sustain. That means that there is a, although it's a much shorter detour, there is a cost involved for fuel for things like commercial vehicles that exceed the current weight. So there's a cost to everything. So you have a responsibility to look at, and that's just this riding. We're not talking about other structures in other areas. The big thing that the, the Chamber and the businesses are working at, there was a letter sent out to the Minister about a week and a half, two weeks ago, <clears throat> in regards to the uh, bridge and, and the construction that's going to be taking place uh, about environmental assessments. And I don't think, you may not know the answer to this, but maybe Don might know the answer to this, if there's going to be <clears throat> an environmental assessment done on this project, this construction that's going to take place in 2014, or already repairs before uh, 2014. We are putting together the specs that will be going out for tender, and in those specs we're looking at all of the, all of the different uh, provisions to reduce the length of the closure, um, including uh, requiring the contractor to run two shifts. Uh, we don't know whether we want to run three shifts and have jackhammers in the middle of the night in Hastings. That's going to be um, uh, something to be considered, but we're going to be looking at, at all of the different methods to compel the, the contractor to work quickly, um, to un undertake innovative construction techniques to keep uh, the bridge accessible for as long as possible before the bridge is put in place. But you, uh, I think it's really important to, to know that there is work that has to be done in the location to the concrete piers, to the pintle, um, that will require some period of time for closure. And how much extra work, how much going back to the drawing board, did this all take, have to take in order to come to this decision? The new bridge versus a repair of the Zaleta. Sir, we're actually looking at trying to do one better and trying to do some of the work um, on the structure with the existing bridge in place. Yeah, are we, are we doing a half-assed job again? No. And no, we're doing a we're doing a complete replacement. Sir, to answer your question as direct as I can, I am not a professional engineer, nor, nor, nor is Ms. Bronson. We have engaged the services of professional engineers, both who work for Parks Canada and Public Works Government Services Canada, who have built many bridges and done many projects, some of them different and some of them similar to this one. We have raised with them uh, the issue of as short a period of time as possible for construction of, 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 this, of this project. 
And as I said previously, there are not bridges, most bridges don't move, but these bridges move. Moving bridges wear out quicker than stationary bridges. So that reduces the number of people who actually have a have an ability to construct these these bridges. So that's why some of the questions we can't give you, it'll be 18 days, four hours and 23 no. minutes. But what we're saying is we're doing everything we can to shorten the construction season, not just, not you know, for, for many reasons, but most of them for uh, strictly economic and social uh, and social reasons. I, I, I think the MP uh, representing the federal government he read out tonight and said there will be no temporary bridge. And you know you can ask the same question 400 times and ask it 800 different ways. Uh, if the answer is no, it's no. And we need to get past that. You know, we've, we've heard a commitment to the accessible uh, walk, pedestrian walkway. Uh, I was on site this morning again with, with uh, Superintendent Bronson. And, and she got an engineer, a member of her engineering staff. And they will be absolutely be making sure that part of the RFP process is that there be a pedestrian walkway that's accessible. Uh, we're, we're getting almost everything we want. And, and at the end of the day, as a taxpayer, I, I, I think I kind of got a hard time believing that, that we should spend, you can pick the number, whether it's 500000 or whether it's a million dollars or whether it's $2 million to build a temporary bridge that's only going to be needed for five to eight weeks. I mean, as a Canadian, we need that money. Not that a temporary bridge isn't important. I think we've got more important things in Canada that, that money should be going to. Is there any way, seeing that the government collects gas taxes, that we can be rebated on our income tax for traveling around this extra 80 kilometers. You already get a rebate on your gas tax. It goes to the municipality so that they can do well, all over the road. For my pocket, I'm talking. Yeah. Because <laughs> all our as a senior, and as everybody else in this room, we're at the limit. Yeah, I, am, I appreciate that. It will change how we do the construction project and it will give us some opportunities for, I think, efficiencies in terms of um, when we close and for how long we close. The problem here seems to be money. The swing bridge exists not so that cars can go over the river. The swing bridge exists so that boats, rich men in big boats, can go through the canal. Uh, Parks Canada looks after that for them and Parks Canada wants to save money. Why is it reasonable to expect Parks Canada to save money so that we can spend money and inconvenience? Why is it our fault that we're being forced to experience this? I'd like to know if there, there has been a recent traffic survey done, because just in the time that we were down there tonight, there was about 30 cars went by. And, you know, this is, a, this is the dead season, supposedly, for this town. And that means that only in the space of an hour, there are probably about 100 vehicles go through in the dead season, right? And we're talking about from January, probably until the end of April, or, or maybe into May, when you're talking about that new bridge being put in place, because there's always holdouts. There's, there's always delays in, in production, whatever. So we're looking at quite a significant uh, drop-off of, of everything in, in this town, and it's going to shut down. It's going to shut down. When we get down to the point where they're, you know, exact dates, deadlines, times, and other decisions that have to be made. Nothing's written in stone. As you know, in life, there are always possibilities and changes. Uh, but uh, tonight, I gave you the situation as it currently exists, exists, and we'll continue to, through uh, His Worship and the community at large, uh, notify you in the appropriate way as to what's happening. Mr. Nuremberg, I don't want to apologize for my abruptness and rudeness. It's a tough job being an MP and getting all the crap from your subjects. But anyway, I want to uh, thank can you I and just apologize. Uh, sir, no need to apologize. I, I'm going to be, to be talk to I, I'm going to, I'm going to be frank with you. Uh, despite what some people may think, uh, I am your neighbor. I live in this community. I shop and go to the restaurants here. So I'm, I'm very much aware. 
I've lived here for a short 16 plus years. Uh, I know the economics of this riding, and I know that Hastings is Hastings is not the you know the the, the best off as far as annual incomes etc. I know approximately the mean average age. Uh, I understand that, and I understand the hardships. But you know Canada is a big country. Uh, the Trent River, the Trent system. Uh, it's very difficult to uh, to explain the uh, how much effort has to go into getting some small changes, uh, but when I wouldn't be earning. I would not be earning. I wouldn't be worthy of your support. I wouldn't be a worthy member of Parliament if I did not, if I could not, and would, wouldn't come to these meetings, and if I didn't work my damnedest on your behalf. That's what you pay me to do. And, and, and whether anyone in here chooses to believe it or not, that's what I do do. Uh, and, you know, I've given this, this a huge amount of effort, and I commit to you to continue to do so. But I will not stand in front of you and tell you, or tell you a lie or mislead you. I can only give you the truth as far as I know it, and, and I'll continue to work that. hard for you. Yeah. Uh, and I understand the emotions that can be involved. I mean, we're talking about, I mean, Sky and the rest of you, I understand all those things. And I, and I know that uh, Hastings is a community that will overcome any kind of hardship that will result of this. We'll continue to work on your behalf, but I will not mislead you. Uh, so I'll just say, I'm listening tonight, and we'll continue to work on your behalf. Um, you know, without insulting your intelligence, sometimes, you know, uh, you know, you don't in life. You don't get everything you want. I sure don't. Uh, but I can tell you, as far as as far as Northumberland Quinney West goes, I'll stand up beside any member of Parliament any time in the history of this riot, and I can say that what the amount of your tax dollars that I brought back to this riding, uh, I think you'll find I have a hard time finding another MP who's done that. But that doesn't still give you what you want. And I came here tonight knowing. That short of a temporary bridge, no one was, very few people were going to go home happy. I cannot commit to that tonight. I cannot tell you that it's a possibility. All I can say is I hear your message. I will take it back to Ottawa and work on work as best I can on your behalf. Now, just coming down, I work over here at RBC, and, and some of my colleagues have young families and they drive in and it takes about an hour just to get into the Hastings branch but of course the um, they have to work at the Workworth branch on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I was just wondering before the delay was there any talk about a shuttle service to just maybe Workworth, Campbellford, something like that and was there a plan for that? I'm, I'm sorry if I'm a little ignorant behind it I didn't get all the information so I thought it just happened. Yeah there's, there are lots of uh, there have been a plethora of, uh, of ideas that come come forward you know, people sit around the coffee table and say, oh, I have a friend who knows somebody who's an engineer and he said this was possible. And, uh, I can tell you that when his worship comes to me with some ideas, some of them are similar to that, uh, we looked into them. Uh, so none of those, I, you know, I mean, I can, all, all I know is a responsibility. And the responsibility is to be a good manager of tax dollars. The responsibility is to be responsive to, the, to your citizens. And you try to meld the two together. You also, you also try not to set a precedent that any time there's anything that goes wrong, you have to do certain things because what you do for one, you do for everybody all the time. Uh, so you have to be, you, you set in all of, those, all of those issues. Canada's a big country. Uh, there are lots of bridges, that the, not a lot that the federal government owns. Uh, you talk to the people in Montreal, there's hundreds of millions of dollars going to be spent on a bridge. We've been spending $30 million. Governments have been spending tens and thirty millions of dollars a year just to keep it up because nobody wanted the big expenditure and there comes a time when you have no choice. We have no choice with this bridge. You either fix it or you put a new one in. We listen to the community. I just you know read out some of the changes to our plan. And there may be, as I said, I'm not gonna lie or mislead you, there may be other changes down the road. We'll look at all those things. Hastings helpers, his worship, uh, are working as a community. There are different levels of government involved. All I can tell you is I committed to his worship in this community to do everything I can 
to mitigate to the extent possible any disruption, uh, both social and economic. Yeah. Some of those plans are already in the works, and they're not complete, but there has been lots of discussion about uh, shuttle service for people, uh, the NTI program is already in place and will be, uh, has been enhanced by Council. Uh, there's already been discussion about uh, shuttle service for goods and services, uh, such as uh, grocery delivery, things like that. Uh, we will be working closely with, with the, uh, the Hastings Helper Group who are working hard to identify what needs to be done on what particular days or what particular times. And long before the construction actually starts, what we can do to mitigate uh, any of those smaller things that we can do from a municipal level, such as busing, uh, emergency services, uh, ambulance service that's provided by the counties, uh, roads, uh, delivery of, uh, of uh, roads maintenance, snow plowing, all those things, those plans will be in place before, and, and every single person in Hastings will know about it. Thank you very much. I'm up here uh, at least twice a week, so if there's anything I can bring up from Campbellford, Thank you. <laughs> Stack of 50s this hot. Yes, sir. <laughs> the, the big issue concerning uh, this had to do with time, had to do with meeting community expectations, issues that were brought up by the community, uh, and the money for the new bridge had to come out of an existing bu the existing budget of Parks Canada. I believe, I believe so, but if you've been looking at the news, when a government utilizes the Canadian Armed Forces for any project, it isn't free. It has to be accounted. The Attorney General, as you know, with the F-35 issue, you have to account human resource hours. Uh, so you have to account for their salaries uh, to a specific project. So for someone to say that you know, it doesn't cost anything, uh, everything costs, uh, and everything has to be done according to, according to uh, Privy Council and Treasury Board rules, there has to be a costing to it. So any costing that I bring forward, there is no such thing as free labor. As it, so every costing will include uh, the salaries of anyone involved. It doesn't matter who that is, uniformed or not. We've done a number of bridges recently uh, uh, up in the Port Sarah area, uh, up in the Kirkfield area uh, along the Talbot. And a, a few years ago before I arrived down, um, on the Murray Canal uh, at Caring Place. Uh, the place we used a Bailey Bridge was on the, the um, uh, Murray Canal because the uh, road approach and the, and the distance across the canal facilitated the use of a Bailey Bridge. Um, what we face here is a, a river, not a canal that we would have to cross. There is no uh, way we can approach um, the uh, existing provincial bridge um, and do the construction that we need to do on the, on the existing swing bridge. So we would have to do a Bailey Bridge across the entire river which would incorporate um, piers uh, in the river because of the, the, the huge span that we have, environmental assessment, fisheries, um, current uh, considerations, ice considerations, there's a, a whole lack of factors that would be involved and it is the distance across the river including approaches on both sides. Okay. Well I'd like to thank you all for coming out tonight. Um, hopefully, hopefully... Can I just ask one quick question of John? Uh, you, you suggested this was a provincial bridge? Is that true? Or Pre is it previously bridge. Yeah, it, it's previously a provincial bridge. It now belongs to three levels of government. The concrete portion on the south side is the County of Northumberland. The swing bridge, as you know, is federal government. And the head, the head race on this side is Trent House. <laughs> Not to complicate things. Well, 